This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Check out the link in the description to find out how to make your Mac run just like new. Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and the 16 inch MacBook Pro is finally out and it addressed a lot of the complaints that people have had with Apple's laptop lineup. However, there is another laptop in this lineup that I actually had a pretty favorable review of just a few months ago, and that would be the 13-inch MacBook Pro. And even though the 16-inch MacBook Pro addresses a lot of complaints, it's not necessarily the laptop for everyone. So with the brand new 16-inch MacBook Pro out and that older entry-level 13-inch MacBook Pro out, which one is right for you? Well, first, I think a really big factor for almost anyone is going to be the price of these machines. So the entry-level MacBook Pro comes in at $1,299, and that is for the two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 port model. If you compare that with the brand new 16-inch MacBook Pro, that starts at $2,399. And if you're doing the math, that is a $1,100 difference. But with a credit, that's because the entry-level 13-inch MacBook Pro only comes with 128 gigabytes of storage compared to the base model of the 16-inch, which comes with 512 gigabytes of storage, as well as 16 gigabytes of RAM as opposed to the 13 inches, eight gigabytes of RAM. Now, some people could get by on just eight gigabytes of RAM. However, that storage at 128 is awfully low. Now you do have the options to spec that up to 256 gigabytes for $1,499. But if you want the same 512 gigabytes of storage as the higher end 16 inch model, that's gonna cost you $1,699. And that's overall going to be a $500 difference between the entry level 13 inch with two ports and then the higher end 16 inch model. Of course, with that 16 inch, you could spec it out even higher than the base model. And of course they even have that higher end base model, which starts at $2,799. Not to mention that although I'm specifically talking about the entry level 13 inch MacBook Pro in this video, there are other 13 inch MacBook Pros that have four ports and those start at $1,799 for a 256 gigabyte version. All right, next let's talk about the design of both of these laptops. And at first glance, both of these laptops share a very similar design language, but there are a few key differences here. First of all, the 16 inch MacBook Pro is obviously much bigger in size. This can be a positive point or a negative point depending on how you look at it. One of those positives is that it does come with a bigger 16 inch display as opposed to the entry level MacBook Pro, which does come with a smaller 13.3 inch display. The 16 inch also has reduced bezels making for an overall more efficient design, but the display quality on both of them is pretty much identical. Albeit on the 16 inch, you do get the additional option for various variable refresh rates below 60 hertz. I personally haven't found these variable refresh rates to be all that helpful for me, but if you are the type of person that can take advantage of that, that is a plus. Now I think everyone likes a nice big display to look at, but that also comes with some downsides as well. First of all, that 16 inch MacBook Pro is significantly heavier at 4.3 pounds compared to the 13 inch model, which weighs just about three pounds. Not only is the 16 inch model thicker than the 15 inch model, but it's also noticeably thicker than the 13 inch model, which was already slimmer than the old 15 inch. Overall, that means the 13 inch MacBook Pro is a much better option for people who are planning to be super mobile with this device. And if you frequent cafes with small tables or airplane seats with little leg room, or you just carry around a smaller bag, you'll appreciate the more compact design of the 13 inch model. As I mentioned before, I am comparing the highest end base version of the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the lowest end 13 inch. So on the lowest end of the 13 inch, you only have two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports. And that introduces minor pain points. For example, you can't charge the laptop on either side of the device like you could with the 16 inch version. Now you could rectify this by spending $1,799 for the four port model of the 13 inch, which isn't featured in this video. But if you are in the market for a 13 inch model and you can live with just two Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, that is the model I would recommend. I find it to be a better value than what you would spend for the higher end four port configuration. Now at this point in the video, you're probably still deciding which MacBook Pro you should buy, but no matter what MacBook Pro you buy, you need to check out our sponsor for this video, Clean My Mac X. Clean My Mac X is an all-in-one package to clean up your Mac and make it run just like new. In one click, Clean My Mac X instantly scans your Mac and checks for unused system junk, which was a huge lifesaver for me recently when I was trying to free up space on my Mac. 
as macOS can store hundreds of gigabytes worth of purgeable disk space that can't be manually removed on its own. Furthermore, CleanMyMac X can also find hidden apps and folders and features an advanced anti-malware protection that protects your Mac in real time and can remove malware, adware, viruses, keyloggers, data, and password mining apps, and undetected apps and extensions. So you can make sure your Mac is private and secure. Clean My Mac X is also notarized directly by Apple, so you know you can trust it. Best of all, you can try a free demo of Clean My Mac X, so you can safely try all the tools before you decide to keep it on your Mac. And once you do, you can purchase an annual subscription for $40, which is less than $4 a month to keep your Mac protected and make sure it always runs like new. So be sure to check out the link in the description to download Clean My Mac X. And thank you so much to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Now, another major design difference between the 16 inch and the 13 inch is actually the keyboards. With the 16 inch MacBook Pro introducing a magic keyboard, which replaces the old butterfly keyboard found on the 13 inch models. Now I'll preface this by saying that butterfly keyboards have had a really bad reputation of breaking with stuck or repeating keys for a lot of customers but I personally have never experienced this issue with any of my butterfly keyboards, even dating back to the original 2016 MacBook Pro where it introduced the butterfly keyboard design. And for the most part, I have not seen any major issues with the 2019 model of the butterfly keyboard, which is the fourth revision of the butterfly keyboard, but Apple did introduce new materials into that design which was supposed to fix the stuck or repeating key issue. And I think it might have because I'm seeing a lot less reports of those 2019 models getting stuck or repeated keys. And if there are any issues with a 2016 to 2019 MacBook Pro with the butterfly keyboard, Apple does have a four year replacement warranty whenever you purchase any of these laptops. Now, in terms of just typing on them, it's a toss up because I have always liked the way the butterfly keyboard felt and the shorter travel never bothered me. I actually found it faster to type on them, especially when doing short bursts of typing. But the Magic Keyboard on the 16 inch combines a lot of the tactile punchiness of the butterfly keyboard into an older design that uses traditional scissor switch mechanisms and gives you an enhanced one millimeter of key travel. So it's really the best of both worlds. The Magic Keyboard on the 16 inch also incorporates a physical escape key, which is going to be a welcome addition for a lot of users. Now, in terms of actually typing on either the 16 inch or the 13 inch, for me personally, it's a toss up. So I would say it's a tie. That being said, because there have been reliability issues with the butterfly keyboard in the past, I would have to automatically give the win over to the 16 inch MacBook Pro's keyboard because that scissor switch mechanism is a lot less likely to fail. Plus, I think most customers aren't like me and they would appreciate the additional key travel on the 16 inch model. Now moving on, MacBook Pros have always had what I would call pretty good speakers for a laptop. And the 13 inch is no exception here. It provides some pretty great audio for a laptop. Well, I guess that's until I heard the 16 inch MacBook Pro speakers, which redefines the quality you would expect from a premium laptop. That's not to say the 13 inch speakers are horrible because they're still better than a lot of other laptop speakers, but when you listen to the 16 inch speakers with their better bass and overall richer sound, it's noticeable that the 13 inch just isn't up to par. Speaking of which, the microphone on the 16 inch is now also much better than the 13 inch model. And while I think it sounds great, especially for inbuilt laptop microphones, and you can absolutely podcast with them and sound pretty decent, they still aren't better than a real dedicated microphone. So it might not be a huge deal to most people. This is a test recording using the 16 inch MacBook Pro's internal microphone. This is a test recording on the 13 inch MacBook Pro's internal microphone. 
Okay, how about another important metric for a lot of consumers? Battery life. Now you might think that the 16 inch MacBook Pro with its huge new battery inside of it would make a huge difference over the entry level 13 inch model. Now battery life is going to vary a lot depending on what you're using your laptop for. Now Apple rates the 16 inch MacBook Pro at 11 hours, completely using it for wireless web browsing. Using that sort of metric, we can expect the 16 inch MacBook Pro to get around 10 hours and 50 minutes of battery life usage. Using that same rigid metric of just using the MacBook Pro as a web browser would get you around 10 hours and 30 minutes of continuous battery life. Again, people do not really just use their laptops for web browsing, so this is a very unrealistic test, but it can kind of give you a glimpse that the battery life between both of these devices are actually pretty similar. Now you might be asking, how is that possible when the 16 inch MacBook Pro has such a bigger battery inside of it? Well, that can be due to a couple of things. So for example, a 16 inch MacBook Pro has a bigger display. That's going to have more of a battery drain than the smaller 13.3 inch display. The 16 inch MacBook Pro also has more power hungry Intel chips inside of them and also a dedicated graphics card. So depending on what you're doing, that will cause the battery to drain faster. Speaking of those chips, what kind of performance difference can you expect from going with the lowest end 13 inch MacBook Pro with its Core i5 quad core processor and then going up to the 16 inch MacBook Pro with its beefy eight core i9? Well, if we're going by everyone's favorite benchmark Geekbench, you can get a single core score of 944 and a multi-core score of 3,899 on the entry level 13 inch model. If we compare that to the 16 inch model with the Core i9 2.3 gigahertz, we are getting a single core score of 1,103 and a multi-core score of 6,417. Again, those numbers really don't mean anything. They're just a benchmark. So I wanted to do a real world test of exporting a 4K 10 minute video project in ProRes. Now, obviously the 16 inch MacBook Pro finished faster at this export, finishing in at five minutes and two seconds. The 13 inch MacBook Pro took eight minutes and 55 seconds to complete the same exact export. So roughly about a four minute difference between both of those export times. Another difference I wanted to test out is the graphics power because the 13 inch model is using an integrated graphics card while the 16 inch model has a dedicated graphics card. To test out these graphics cards, I used the Unigen Heaven Benchmark and set both of the machines to high settings. At the end of the test, the 13 inch MacBook Pro got an average FPS of 30.6 with an overall score of 772 with the Intel Iris Plus Graphics 645. Running that same test on the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I got an average frame rate of 82.5 and an overall score of 2078 with the Radeon Pro 5500M with four gigabytes of video memory. So running that test, we are seeing more than double the performance in terms of graphics for the 16 inch model. And yes, you're not surprised. This is to be expected. The 16 inch MacBook Pro has much more powerful CPUs and a much more powerful GPU than the entry level 13 inch model. That's to be expected with a beefier six to eight core and dedicated graphics card. However, I thought it was important to show you these results so you know what sort of expected increase in performance you can get when you're spending more money. Because maybe you don't mind waiting for longer exports in Final Cut Pro 10, or maybe your work doesn't involve graphics demanding tasks, or maybe you just value increased portability above all else. And at this point, you probably noticed in this video that there hasn't been any sort of scoring system and that's on purpose because in the end there is no clear winner between both of these laptops that's because people's tastes and needs are different some might prefer portability thinness and lightness and an overall more inexpensive laptop while others want the biggest display best performance and don't mind spending at least two thousand and four hundred dollars to have it all and as a viewer, you need to decide which of these features between the 16 inch and 13 inch are ultimately more important to you. And as a viewer, you should also be aware that refreshes of the 13 inch MacBook Pro are expected by next year. With at least an update changing the butterfly keyboard to the new magic keyboard found in the 16 inch model. 
So if you came away watching this video and you absolutely want a smaller size MacBook Pro but hate the keys on the 13 inch model, or you are worried about their reliability, I would recommend waiting until 2020 to purchase a new laptop if you can. But ultimately, in the end, there is no perfect laptop and both of these machines have their pros and cons. But with that being said, hopefully this video helped you out in deciding which MacBook Pro you should buy. If it did, make sure you leave a like. If you wanna see more from this channel, make sure you're subscribed. Also be sure to check out our sponsor for this video, Clean My Mac X. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.